Mr. Shapiro, I'm going to start with you. You have admitted that parts of the deal could have been better. So why should the U.S. stay in a flawed deal that doesn't stop Iran from getting the bomb? Right. The structure of this deal was not to end the Iranian nuclear program. That's probably an impossible objective. The goal that President Obama set was first to identify the most serious threat Iran poses. Iran poses many threats with terror and missiles and uh, disruption of other uh, countries in the region. But the most dangerous thing Iran does is try to achieve nuclear weapons. And so this deal bought the maximum amount of time by removing from Iran's possession enriched uranium and much of the infrastructure to build nuclear weapons. Uh, it could keep Iran at least a year from the ability to achieve a nuclear weapon for the longest period of time possible, at least a decade and, or decade and a half. Now, that's not a perfect deal. And I've been uh, very clear in saying there are things I wish had come out stronger in the deal and that I knew we would have to come back and revisit it later to strengthen it or extend uh, the restrictions on Iran. But in international affairs, we're rarely able to achieve the best possible outcome. We're usually only able mm -hmm. to achieve the least bad possible outcome. And every other outcome was worse. Certainly, once you have the deal in place, it creates a reality, and to give it up without a replacement, I think, is very reckless. Ambassador Chaval, uh, the ambassador, Ambassador Shapiro, said that the deal, you know, had some flaws, but uh, uh, it's better to stay in it. Doesn't pulling out of the deal not stop Iran from getting the bomb? It actually accelerates the Iran from from getting the nuclear bomb quicker. Well, first of all, I fully agree with my friend Ambassador. Dan Shapiro, that it's a flawed deal. I mean, nobody can dispute it's a very flawed deal, except those who negotiated the deal and they want to defend their own place in history, you know, like the people who negotiated at the time the, the Munich deal with Hitler. Yes. But it's a bad deal, even if there may not be very good alternatives, and I agree with that. So the question really is, what is the least worst alternative right now? And to keep the deal as it is, I mean, you know, whatever Dan said is, is correct, but for how long? Mm -hmm. It's only seven years till the end of the deal. And by the way, the deal does not guarantee that the Iranians will not continue their nuclear research and, and efforts in all sorts of hidden away places, which where the United, you know, the, um, the international body, which uh, supposedly monitors this, doesn't even get an entry permit. Right. So I think that, I don't know what President Trump's going to do. You don't, okay. But I think the best alternative is to have additional clauses like President Macron mm -hmm. suggested in a speech to Congress. How do we get there? That's another question. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Shapiro, there have been some reports that former U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has met with the Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Zarif to try and save this deal. Is that not going behind the back of the Trump administration? Well, I don't know much about those reports other than what I've seen. Obviously, former officials have no authority or standing to negotiate with foreign governments. Uh, so I wouldn't put much stock in whatever those conversations might achieve. But what my friend Ambassador Cheval highlighted was that there are discussions underway. President Macron uh, tried to advance them when he was in Washington between the United States and Britain, France and Germany to find ways of strengthening and extending the deal. Uh, strengthen the inspection protocols to make sure our, the inspectors can get access to military sites. Apply new sanctions against the ballistic missile program until Iran uh, curtails it, because that's not covered by the Iran nuclear deal. And at least agree between the United States and the European powers that we would seek to extend the sunset clauses, the, the, the uh, provisions in the deal when certain restrictions expire. Those are all very uh, important and I think quite uh, useful ways of strengthening the deal. My assessment, however, is that President Trump is not really interested in that. My assessment is that President Trump has already made the decision mm -hmm. that on May 12th he will cancel the deal. I believe uh, the presentation of the intelligence that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu put forward a week ago was probably coordinated with the Trump administration mm -hmm. to help the Trump administration uh, justify that decision. And this is part of his M.O. His M.O. is to look at things that President Obama advanced as part of his uh, legacy, uh, the trade agreement in Asia, Obamacare, uh, this Iran deal, 
uh, and uh, try to cancel those things. Those things he's very consistent and actually quite predictable about being uh, 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 trying to trying to cancel as part of his own uh, legacy. Ambassador Shaval, the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, has warned that if the United States quits the deal, as uh, Ambassador Shapiro thinks that they will, uh, then Washington will, will regret it, quote, like never before. What do you well, think Rouhani is implying to when he says that? I don't know, but uh, you know, do, do you remember there was a, a movie once called The the Mouth That Roared? So, yeah. okay, <laughs> the Iranians are going to roar, yeah. but let's be serious about that. I mean, all these uh, corrections which uh, Ambassador Shapiro mentioned, you know, how to do and how to correct, I would fully agree to that and sign a new agreement immediately. Mm -hmm. But the question is, why should or how should the Iranians be persuaded to agree to these things? Mm -hmm. And there perhaps the threat of the United States, the threat of the president to cancel the deal, not actually canceling yeah. it, but to renew the sanctions and so on and so forth, that may perhaps be one of the implements to make the Iranians agree to these additional clauses which we all want. Okay. Uh, Dan, before we go for our break, we only have a minute uh, left. You recently went on to uh, Twitter. Uh, by the way, I have to commend your Twitter game, sir. You are top-notch when it comes to Twitter. I, I, I recommend our, our viewers to follow you. You warned of the rape repercussions, and in one tweet you actually warned that many people will die. You said it's a dangerous path. I'm going to put it up on screen. We don't know where it could lead. Many Americans, Israelis, as well as Iranians, Lebanese, Syrians, Saudis, and Emiratis could die. And when it's over, Iran might be able to regenerate its program. Are you really that fearful of what this will come to, to those kinds of deaths in the 30 minutes, we, 30 seconds we have left? Well, I just think there's no uh, plan uh, presented for an alternative to this deal. And uh, I believe Iran is a very dangerous country, and I believe they want to achieve nuclear weapons. If we give up all of our diplomatic paths, we actually have a military option. We need to be prepared to use it as a last resort. President Obama put it in place. Okay. But uh, obviously, that comes with risk, risk for people on all, all sides. Right. Okay. Debating the Iran nuclear deal on our segment, Media's Crossfire, with former U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro in New York and former Israeli Ambassador to the U.S. Zalman Shoval in studio here in Tel Aviv. Zalman, uh, Zalman I want to start with, uh, with you now. Um, the New York Times is reporting uh, this morning that President Rouhani of Iran is looking at ways to stay in the deal with the Europeans. Can this deal stick together even if the U.S. pulls out? It can. It can. Uh, certainly, formally it can, but it won't have the same value, certainly, to the Iranians, mm. because the economic part of it is, most, I would say, mostly in the hands of the United States. The relations with the Iranian National Bank, the export of, of oil, and so on and so forth. And I agree with Dan. Diplomacy must continue, always. But as Henry Kissinger said, behind diplomacy, you have mm -hmm. to back it up with some force. Ambassador Shapiro, what are your thoughts on that? Can the deal stick together with just the Europeans, if that's what Rouhani really wants? I think the first and smartest strategic play for the Iranians will be try to, to try to stay in the deal and try to drive a wedge between the United States and our European allies. But I don't think it's really sustainable. Uh, there will be U.S. sanctions renewed that will prevent many European companies from doing the kind of business in Iran that was envisioned under the deal. Uh, that will put pressure on the European governments. The uh, Iranians will face pressure internally uh, because of their own economic crisis, uh, and they often use their advance of their nuclear program as a way of rallying national support. And I think the government, under pressure from these street protests, uh, may uh, feel they need to turn to that. So I think within six months or a year, Iran will begin uh, kicking out inspectors, will begin mm. enriching uranium again, will begin doing things that are prohibited under the deal, and then uh, it might start as a slow motion collapse, but then I expect that they would move quickly to uh, the threshold of a breakout, which is where they stood right before the agreement. Okay, I want to stay with you, Dan. Uh, both the New Yorker and the uh, British uh, Weekly Observer reported in the last couple of days that the Trump administration hired an Israeli company called the uh, Black Cube, who also dug up dirt on uh, women allegedly harassed by Harvey Weinstein, to find some dirt on Obama administration officials uh, in an attempt to discredit the nuclear deal. What's your response to those reports? Well, obviously, I don't know anything about the reports and, and the veracity of them. What seems very clear 
is that uh, at least two former Obama administration officials were sort of harassed, or their, even their families were sort of harassed for information that tried to dig up uh, dirt and financial information on them. Uh, and it was at the same period of time when some people in the Trump administration and some external allies of the Trump administration were putting a lot of focus and criticism uh, on those individuals for their role in the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, obviously, if this occurred, it's outrageous, it's a scandal. Uh, individuals who serve their government and serve their country uh, should feel that they can do so without uh, fear of uh, some uh, post-service uh, retribution and investigations and trying to dig up dirt on their families. Uh, so if this happened, whether it was from within the administration or from external allies, it's very, very serious, and I hope the FBI and other authorities will look into it. Ambassador Shapiro, were you ever uh, targeted like this in, f in a familiar fashion? I've never experienced anything like that. Okay. Um, Zalman, you know, this Israeli company, Black Cube, denies this. But what do you think? I mean, if Israelis may have been involved in this digging up dirt of Obama officials, how does this make Israel look? I read neither the New Yorker nor or the, the Observer. Observer <laughs> so I don't really know the first thing about it. Okay. Um, let me ask you something else, though. Uh, Iran is seen as, as a threat to Israel also in Syria now. And, and, and the IDF even warned last night that uh, an Iranian reprisal attack to this alleged Israeli attack of the T-4 base outside of uh, Homs could, be, it could include missiles on military targets uh, in the north of the country. Do you think that a pullout by the United States from this deal could give Iran even more of an incentive to open up a direct front opposite Israel from Syrian territory in the next few days or weeks? Frankly, I don't think so, and I hope I'm not wrong. I think the Iranians uh, will think very, very seriously about creating a real threat of the sort that some people are talking about. They may do something localized. You never know what our response will be for, for their so, so, uh, supposedly localized effort. Perhaps our won't. Be localized. Mm. I don't know our response. But, you know, there are still factors involved. There's Russia in the game, and there still is the United States in the game. I'd like the United States to be more in the game than it is. And I think the Iranians will think seriously about threatening their own position. It's too much. There's too much at stake for them, I think. What do you think of this, Ambassador Shapiro, with this, uh, you know, saber rattling, this war of words and the imminent the pullout from the deal? Are we going towards this direct confrontation between Iran and Israel in Syria? Well, I think without uh, connection to the Iran nuclear deal, the answer is yes. Uh, <clears throat> Iran has made very clear that they want to use the stabilization of the Assad regime and the defeat of ISIS in Syria as an opportunity to entrench their own military infrastructure in Syria as a means to threaten Israel, to create essentially a second front on Israel's northern border together with the front that's already been built in Lebanon with Hezbollah. And that's very serious. Uh, Israel has the full right uh, and full legitimacy uh, to uh, try to counter that threat. Uh, there have been some cases where it's known and other cases where it's speculated that Israel has struck at Iranian targets in Syria. Uh, I uh, obviously hope those are done carefully. I think they are. The Israeli military uh, intelligence services are very professional. Uh, but this is something that uh, uh, is a real threat, a real uh, urgent threat that the Israeli political and uh, military leadership are united in trying to counter, and I think they're absolutely correct to do so. I'd say one more sentence on it, which is that some Israeli strategists, and I'll just mention one who's quite well known, that's Amos Gilad, the former uh, director of uh, Israeli military intelligence and political military affairs in the defense ministry, just said in an interview that that is the most urgent threat, uh, and he would prefer to keep the Iran nuclear deal in place for uh, at least some more time so that Israel can focus on the most urgent threat uh, rather than have to worry about the resurgence of the Iranian nuclear program while it's trying to defeat Iranian uh, military engagements in Syria. Let's wrap it up with you, Zalman Shalva. Would you agree with that assessment? I almost there's, no there's actually there's no uh, contradiction in there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the threat of the Iranians right now in Syria is immediate. It's an immediate threat. But the long-term threat of the nuclear uh, event, uh, attempt by the Iranians is a much more serious attempt, a much more serious threat in the long range. And the long range is just a few years down the road. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your insight. It's been a pleasure having you on The Spin Room discussing this topic, and we'll have to see what Donald Trump decides.